and welcome to the Scale Model Geek. After the disastrous build that I had last time, I thought I'll give the shark a bit of a go once again, but this time I'm actually going to do a mecha shark. And I might throw some lasers on there as well. These figures that I'm using come from loot, and they're pre-supported, which saved me a lot of time in setting that up, so they're pretty cool to use. Amazing detail in them as well. Off camera, I've already done the undercoat, and I'm just doing a base coat of black here now, because I plan to do some zenithal shading with this. So I gave all three pieces a coat of black, and it's just flat black from uh, Vallejo. And during this painting process, I kind of thought the general maybe needs some more detail on his breathing apparatus. Well, I think it's a breathing apparatus. So I jumped into my Greebly's box and uh, found some bits and pieces that suited perfectly. And just with a bit of super glue, stuck them on. I personally think this made a huge difference. And for the actual shading, I'm using this titanium white ink from Liquitex. And basically all you need to do is just spray from one direction, from top to bottom. And the bottom areas that the ink can't get to, becomes your shaded areas. Now for his cape, I'm starting off with this red. Now I'm applying this as a very thin coat, just so the shading can actually show through. I'm using this black to actually paint in between his armor areas. And to dry brush that, his pans are gray from ammo. You can also see the really nice shading in the cape there. And like metal, I'll be dry brushing the white areas as well as the um, shadowed areas. And I'm not actually painting them silver, just, just this straight dry brushing. And that should give me some really nice shading. As you can see there. Now I'm dry brushing the cape with this vermilion and just a light dry brush over the raised areas. And this adds so much depth to the actual cape. I'm using this saddle brown for his ammo pouches that are around his waist. And I'll add a bit more detail with a bit of this uh, panel line accent colour from Tamiya. Now onto painting the alien scientist. I'm using a combination of this goblin green and the white. And I have thinned that down with some medium. And the zenithal shading helps a lot with this area. And a slightly lighter shade of that green. I'm just highlighting the cheeks and cheekbones. Slightly darker tone for the lips. And for his uniform, this IDF blue. And the blue grey just to break up the colouring as well. And I'm just dry brushing all that with a lighter shade of the blue grey. And all I did was just add a bit of white to that. I painted the scientist's chest plate with black, so I'm using this ammo uh, gun metal to actually dry brush that area. The story behind this diorama is these aliens have taken over Earth and have come across this mechanical shark and they're just trying to work out how to make it work. 
Now the gold leaf from Tamiya to do the top crown. Slowly coming together. And red for the whole cape. Basically the same as I did with the general. I'm using the steel for the inserts of that uh, coat of his. And once I've done all the steel bits, I go back to the Tamiya panel line accent color and use that to highlight all the areas around his coat or rather the metal bits around his coat. This is so much easier than trying to find a colour to dry brush it. Really pops out the details as you can see. And now under the computer terminal which I've already uh, painted black earlier. I'm just using this gun metal to actually highlight all the areas. Now in this particular case what I want to do is actually put a display into those screens. Very similar to what I did with the Batmobile uh, quite a few months ago in the project that I have on my channel. I then measured up the size of the screens that I needed and jumped online. And I came across a whole bunch of these different images uh, from various websites, uh, specifically wallpaper sites, where you can download free uh, backdrops and things like that. These particular surrounds I imported into Photoshop and cut and paste them to suit my needs. I then found a whole bunch of HUD displays also from those wallpaper sites and combining all those uh, different images that you see here I made up my own computer terminal screens it did take a bit of trial and error but I got there in the end and after quite a number of hours of work I ended up with this I was really happy with the results of this well worth the effort my first print I did was just on plain paper just to make sure my sizes were correct and lucky me they were. Once I was happy with that I went ahead and actually printed it on white decal paper. And they come up great, the detail was wonderful in that. A bit of warm water there and I also used a bit of Mr. Mark Softer to stick the decals onto the screen. I made sure I had a brand new sharp blade just to make sure I had that uh, crisp edges from the cuts. I first applied the softener, then the decal. And that just gave me the ability to slide the decal around, make sure it goes in uh, exactly where I needed to be. And of course the feature terminal. Cotton bud just to uh, wipe up some of the excess fluid. And I decided to add a bit more details now to the terminal. Some of the buttons I first gave it a coat of uh, steel paint. And on top of that, I went in with some of the Tamiya clear paints. Combination of their colours, some of the clear red, the clear blue, clear green. And back to the panel line accent colour from Tamiya to add a bit more detail to the terminal. Now onto the shark. Now this came off from a website called Thingiverse. They're free. Go check it out. Lots of great stuff there. And this is one of those wobbly sharks that you can buy. They're geared and just put some batteries in it and shark wobbles. So I printed up to the full size that I needed. Which took about eight hours to print. Now my process for printing, once it uh, finishes that section, I move it over to give it a bit of a wash. 
Now the first bucket of wash is some old IPA that I have and that just basically gets rid of most of the um, residue that's left from the print. And once uh, I've done that, I go into the actual wash and kill machine to give it the final IPA wash and roughly for about 10 minutes. Once it comes out of the wash and kill machine, I dip it into hot water and it does a double job there. Not only does it wash the IPA off, but it also softens the supports, which makes taking the print off the supports really easy. As you can see, it just pops right off. And once I've checked to make sure all the supports have taken off the actual print, I then scrape off what's left over off the plate. Off screen what I've actually done as well was give it a wash in some warm soapy water. Then make sure that's dry, uh, straight into the curing machine. And this process anywhere between 5 to 10 minutes. And there we have it. Time to assemble it with some super glue. Because that's really about the only stuff that works with resin. Super glue or araldite. Now between the actual body and the tail, there was a bit of a gap. So I thought I'd add some greeblies in between that section there. So when you look inside the sides, you can actually see some mechanics. And this came out really, really well, it looks really good. This super glue is actually incredible stuff. It's very quick to dry, so it's a matter of just holding it together for a few seconds. And before you know, it's got a fair bit of strength in it and it's ready to go. The Mecha Laser Shark is taking shape. Now I kept the jaw off, the two parts of the uh, head, just to make it a little bit easier for me to paint, because it has some very sharp teeth. And I came across some of these lasers from uh, the Thingiverse website as well, and I printed them out and I thought I'd glue them on the side. Now one each side of the dorsal, And I thought, oh look, it needs something underneath as well. So I came across a flamethrower. Yeah, I know, it's a shark underwater. But it looks cool. Some more greeblies to fill up the space. Yeah, come on, you seriously have to admit that looks awesome. A shark with guns, yay. That'll protect any bad guy's lair. Now I need to give it a base coat of black. Because I'm using this uh, super duper paint. It's a chameleon paint. It actually changes color as you change the angle of the um, shark. Comes from Green Stuff World. And it does have to have a, a black uh, undercoat for that. And this particular case, this is called Darth Blue. And it goes from blue to a purple. And painting in the lasers. Still for the teeth. And gun metal for the actual uh, flamethrower and the lasers. And I end up using the gun metal for the sides of the shark as well, just to give it a bit of a highlight. I'm glad I did that because it looks really good now.
Now these cranes I actually found on Thingiverse as well. Printed them out in one piece. But they have, had a bit of a gap there, so I needed to fill it up. So I grabbed this punch that I had and some uh, plastic card. And just hit it with a hammer and uh, punched out a, a round circle. Now that particular piece is too thick. I ended up uh, doing more out of thinner pieces of plastic card. Like that. Undercoated them. And gave them a base colour. And the colour I used for this was the Vallejo. The sun yellow. And to weather it up a bit, I used some of this dark brown. And I thinned it down quite a fair bit with water. So it was really, really runny and really got caught in the crevices really well. And I used some of this rust texture to create um, some rust texture. <laughs> yeah, just using a bit of sponge to actually apply it. I've never actually painted industrial looking hardware before, so I'm pretty chuffed with how well that's come up. And the good old pan panel line accent colour once again. Into all the edges. And the black for all the hoses. And the hydraulics as well. Now this soil works oil wash. Uh, I just put it around the gearing there. Had a bit of, a bit of it running down the side, you know, some leaking oil, that type of thing. Again, thin down some water. And still for the rest of that hydraulic. And it's right about here. I've realised that my cranes can actually only go up and down. They can't actually spin around. So I need to create a turntable. So I jumped into a piece of software called Blender and I came up with these little bases which I then printed in 3D. Now it's just a matter of gluing it to the base but of course I do need to uh, paint it up in yellow as well. And I also created these eyelets once again in Blender because I do need them to somehow hold the shark up. And of course, I need to go back to that dark brown wash to match it all up. Now I'm using the metallic grey for the base colour of these eyelets. And some of this light metal to dry brush it. Now in the end, I actually went back into Blender and redesigned these and uh, made them a bit more interesting and a bit more detailed as well. And still for the top end. And now for the diorama display base, my old go-to, which is a picture frame. In this particular case, the 8x10. Now what I do is just pop out the back. Get rid of the glass there. In this particular project, I'll be using the back to go on top. Now, once I'm happy with the alignment, I hold it all in place with some masking tape. And from the back, just hot stick it into place. A base black coat with this acrylic project paint which in Australia you get from Bunnings. Nice even coat. And once that's dry, I then went over with some undercoat and gave it a bit of a mottled finish to it. Now I also need to do some safety stripes or hazard stripes. And once I've masked out the line, my first colour is this flat yellow. And I end up needing to do about three coats of this to get a nice yellow to it. 
And for the diagonals, I'm using the six millimeter Tamiya masking tape. And I'm putting that roughly on about a 45 degree angle across it. And I think there are about 20 mil uh, spacings. Then went in with some black. And there it is. Come up really good. But it does need some weathering. So using nail file, I just scuffed up the whole surface. Now it looks a bit more realistic. Now I've got these 6mm acrylic tubes because I want to create some fluorescent lights. And also these 60mm LED filaments. I'll be creating four of these LED stands. Now these filaments do actually have a plus and negative side and they do have a little marker that shows you which is which. They look really good once they light up and I'm just using three volts of power for it. And they perfectly slip in there. Now I want to have just a slit of light coming through these tubes. So I'm using the Tamiya 6mm masking tape once again and just masking off an area and really doubling down making sure I get a good um, adhesion here and I created these in blender and that's the top and the bottom of the actual tubes the bottom one has a hole straight through so uh, it makes access for the wiring I just need them to be black and some dry brushing with this gunmetal once again from Emma And some highlights with some light metal. I end up giving it about three coats of undercoat and another three coats of that sun yellow. And it came up great. It was really crisp, the lines. That's the bottom going in. And the top. And when I'm putting these filaments in, I was making sure that the wire was actually at the back so you couldn't see the wire. Now off camera, I pre-drilled these holes, wired up to a plug. But later on, I ended up changing my mind and connecting up a battery to them rather than the, the jack there, the power jack. And to fix them down, I use this five minute aerodite. And the reason I'm using five minutes, it just gives me the opportunity to, uh, when I stick it down, gives me five minutes to actually adjust them and twist them to exactly the position I want before it goes dry. What I'm using here is the tin foil that comes off the top of a butter container. Now I'm using this to create the suspension straps to hold the shark up. They weren't quite long enough, so I had to glue a couple pieces together to get the right length. Now the wood grain to give it the base colour. And seriously I should have undercoated this but don't know why I didn't. Ugh. Please don't get mad with me. For some reason I forgot to hit the record button so the whole process of me assembling it to this stage, I didn't record at all. So I, I went through all my files, it's not there, so I screwed up somewhere along the line. But anyway, it was pretty straightforward. I just used a bit of super glue on the crane and the computer terminal to um, glue them into place, to uh, lock it in. And then for those straps, uh, again super glue. And all I did was wrap it around the shark, then through the eyelids. A bit fiddly, but it wasn't that hard, just fiddly. Um, so you actually really didn't miss that much. So, sorry, again, I apologise. And for the final step to actually secure the straps to the shark, I'm just using a bit of PVA glue and you can see the new eyelets that I designed and created. I think they're far flashier. A lot more detail in them as well. And super glued the two figures into place, the general and the scientist. Overall, I'm really happy with the way this diorama turned out. And because you've been so patient, I think it's time to show you the hero shots. 
Thanks for joining me.